All right, in this tutorial, we're just going to be going over how you can set yourself up for success with a print and cut inside Make the Cut software. So we're going to be going over the basics from getting the image to tracing it and then to printing it all within Make the Cut software. Now for this tutorial to work, we're going to assume that you have a machine that either is A, a laser calibrated machine so that we can do a three point registration print and cut, or your machine has an optic sensor that detects the registration marks in order to conduct these uh, print and cuts. But uh, as far as the process goes and setting things up, up until the point that we cut is going to be the same no matter what machine you have. Okay, so the process where we can take an image and vectorize it and bring it in to make the cut software is called a pixel trace. Now you can conduct a pixel trace on basically any image or graphic that you find on the internet, and you'll find out that some images work better than others. You know, of course, the better the quality of image that you get to trace will yield a better trace. Now I'm going to go ahead and use one of our Scrappy-Doo images from our Scrappy-Doo library called the Konnichiwa Dolls. And I'd actually like you to follow along as well in this tutorial as it will serve as good practice for you and you'll get a better feel for when you try this on one of your own images that you find. So with that said, I'm making this as a free download and the instructions on the download will be in the description box. So we have our image that we would like to cut, so now it's time to trace the image and make the cut. All right. The pixel trace button is located at the top of the screen here, and if you do not see that icon, you can go ahead and go to the view menu and select the import toolbar option. Once we select the pixel trace button, a new window will, will appear, and this is where we can navigate to our file that we would like to trace. And in the, this example, we're going to go ahead and select the paper dolls, and uh, MTC has a nice little preview window over there on the right hand side, and I'm going to go ahead and click the open button. Now a pixel trace window will appear and this is where we're going to go ahead and start tweaking the trace. Now because we're doing a print and cut from an image that we were tracing, we basically need the outline of the shape, you know, which is better known as a blackout. So let's go ahead and check the blackout option. And while we're down here, we can go ahead and click the texturize path. And basically what that will do is once we hit the import button, it will import the image as well, you know, what is lying underneath the trace. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the apply changes button and we can actually see this effect take place right there on our mat. All right, as you can see from the preview, we're going to need to do some tweaking on this threshold here. And right now the threshold is set to 127 and 127 is just a happy medium that uh, Make the Cut gives you. And it's the halfway point between 0 and 255, which is the numbers that we are allowed to input in here. Now, I always think of this as the closer you get to 255, the more colors you're willing to accept in a trace. You know, in this example, we do not want a detail trace. We want the big overall picture, which is the outline blackout of this image. Now, typically, you'll want to increase, you know, by 10 or 20 and hit Apply Changes button in order to see what did it pick up or is it picking up too much and from previous experience I'm just going to go ahead and save us all time and I'm going to hit the 200 right here for the threshold and I'm going to hit apply changes now there's something else here that I wanted to point out to you which is the resample image right here now I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this preview and show you what a higher sample rate can do for you so right here we have it set to 1 and let's go ahead and bring it up to 4 now prior to hitting apply I want to show you right here where the first sample didn't quite get around the corners here as tight as I would have liked. So let's go ahead and bring it up to four and I'm going to go ahead and hit the apply button. Now once we hit the apply button you'll notice that it may take a little longer for this thing to conduct the trace. However, the results will be worth the wait. So what does a resample image do for us? Basically uh, the higher the number the tighter it gets around the trace but it also increases on how many nodes you get. So that is the, the main difference here. So if you want that tighter fit, you go through the, the higher numbers. And if you want that, uh, that looser or less amount of nodes, you go ahead and decrease the sample rate. All right, so as you can see, the trace goes completely around the objects. And I'm thinking we're ready to import. Now once you hit the import button, a new menu will appear. It'll ask you if you'd like to do another trace. Uh, in addition to this one, I'm going to go ahead and select no. All right, so now that we have the dolls on our mat, I'd like to take a brief moment and talk about some things you can and cannot do um, with a texture item that you've traced. Now, you can move, you can split your texture. You know, if you're wanting to resize, you can do that too. 
you know, you just have to hold the shift button down while you resize with the handles that are in the corners. Now with that said, you cannot rotate the item. Now if you're actually needing an image to be rotated, you're going to have to go into a graphical editing program and you're going to have to rotate it in there, save it, and then retrace in order for this to work because Make the Cut uh, cannot handle rotation. Alright, so the next thing that we need to do is we need to prep MTC for printing. So in order to do this, we're going to go ahead and go to the File menu and go down to Print Options. You'll notice that a new window will appear. Now there are a couple of settings in here that we need to set up prior to printing. So let's go ahead and click the Show Paper on the Mat. Let's go ahead and click the Print Registration Marks. And I'm going to go ahead and keep the, the option checked that where it says Show Registration Marks on the Mat. Now uh, here's where it will differ for you if you have an optic sensor like the Silhouettes. You know, for those machines, uh, you'll see the little drop-down option for the SD as well as the Cameo. Now, since we're going to be using the laser option rather than the, the uh, optic sensor, we're just going to go ahead and stick with the Make the Cut registration marks. Now, this is all we need in this menu in order to prep us for printing. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the OK button. All right, so now you can see that um, what happened here. You'll notice that we have a new dashed border on our on our mat, and that represents our eight and a half by eleven paper. So as long as we have those images within those dashed lines, uh, everything should print just fine. Next, we're just going to go ahead and print like we would any other document in Microsoft Word by going to the File menu and then going to Print. Now we're going to go ahead and select the printer like you would normally and go ahead and hit print. Now the printed paper comes out and you'll notice that it looks exactly like it does on your virtual mat on the screen inside Make the Cut software to include those registration marks. Alright, so that concludes part one of this video where we took an image in to make the cut, conducted a trace, and then we printed our design on the paper. Now because the next step is cutter specific, we're going to go ahead and end this video and we'll make a part two showing you how we actually use the registration marks in order to cut using the print and cut method. So with that, I'm Rob with ScrappyDo.com and stay tuned for part two.